Welcome to another Vertex animation video. So this time we're going to talk about using rigid body settings. And my example here will be a destroyable wall. As you see here in Houdini, I already have that set up. So when I press play, I have this wall uh, collapsing or a part of it is like exploding here. So I have like a bit of uh, concrete and I have like some like some wood structure for variation. So that is my basic uh, animation here. So again, you can get this file as well if you would like to have the setup. I'm going to quickly run over it so you have some idea of what's going on. So we're going to start out with a box. And this box is just my wall. Then we're going to fracture the wall. And these are like my concrete uh, pieces. So you can uh, add as much detail as you want to. In this case, I keep it quite subtle. Then I'm going to do another box. And this one is actually becoming behind my concrete wall. And this will then be my wooden uh, pieces. So these are all like wooden chip pieces. And again, using the material fracturing node and set this to wood type. So we have this wooden structure there. So I'm just merging them together. I'm aligning them on the grid here. So it's automatically in a good position. I'm going to assemble this to back geometry. I'm going to define where I would like my explosion. So I can, for example, here, I would uh, want this part to be exploded or to be flying away. Then we're going to use a point velocity node, which is just basically adding velocity or uh, attribute V. Then I'm also going to say that uh, only this part that I selected with my group uh, needs to be active. And I'm using the uh, attribute active. And then in the actual solver where I do the simulation, uh, we're going to automatically use Thing, things like active and I'm going to also set a ground plane so when I press play I have something like this so we have the wall falling down or parts are like falling down from it and again we can say how much frames you want to so in this case 100 uh, is enough in my case so that should be good enough so again we're going to also make a no node here so I'm going to go to my output so if you watched previous video, I'm just going to here add another uh, network view and we're going to here say switch to output instead of object. So now I can just press my uh, VAT node, so vertex animation node. And in here, uh, we can then here, of course, set our uh, target and our mode. So what do we want to do with it? So we want to use it rigid body dynamics and our game engine. And also here the amount of frames so this is automatically grabbing the numbers here at the bottom then we also need to put in a input so let me grab here my input so objects my wall breaking and then my non node that i just made so accept and will automatically give it here now i already noticed that i have a warning so let's look at the warning here the warning will always tell us what to do or what we should do so in this case, my rigid body dynamics doesn't have any attributes like pivot or orient. So let's go back to our simulation and check that. So here we can, for example, open this geometry sprite sheet, or, or you can also grab it from here. And if you look through it, we don't see anything like pivot or orient. So the vertex animation tool sets needs these attributes to work with that. So we're going to go into our solver settings we're going to go to advanced and all the way down here under outputs we can actually transfer attributes so we can transfer certain data that might be already have been there uh, so we can here open that and we can now find our orient and our pivot so we're going to select these two and we're going to also enable transfer that to my geometry so normally if everything went right we should now have a orient and also here the pivot. So these are two very important things to have. Otherwise, uh, the, the vertex animations will not be able to calculate uh, results. So here, my error is immediately gone. I can also hide my spreadsheet back again. And now let's go into some other settings. So here we can have the pivot accuracy. And it already tells you what it will cost. So this is good quality at lower a memory footprint so we can have something like if you want to go with like the maximum quality you also need to enable like full precision uvs uh, in unreal but you might not be always want to do that so we're going to leave it as it is 
we also have rec rotation interpolation so you can change that as well again often if you hover with your mouse on the setting it will actually tell you more so for this video i'm gonna leave it most by default since the tool will give a good result by default we can also have some other uh, more settings here that can be useful then we have our settings for all our modes so here we have to enable or disable if our input is actually cached so normally if you do a simulation you would often use the cache node so the file caching system so in this case it's not super complex of a simulation so i don't really need to cache it but it's often recommended to cache out simulations so in this case i'm actually not caching anything so i might disable this so the tool knows that i'm not uh, bringing information from a cache then we have a hdr format which will later be useful in unreal to know about so this is for 16 to 30 bit engines so if you don't have that uh, you can switch to 8 as well and there are some more settings here if you want to do custom attributes like if you want to get a custom value inside of the game and also this is then the target uh, resolution for the width you can play around with that but most again by default the tool will give you some great results uh, by default then these are some inputs so for example here uh, the required inputs for this tool is a position so we, the p attribute the pivot and the orient that we just created so these three attributes are necessary or otherwise the tool might not be able to calculate well and these are then some other uh, values you can uh, use in the system but these three here are required so here then important is also the exporting so let's give this a proper naming so we can do something like tutorial tutorial and then rigid body dynamics then here this is the naming of the nodes this is a reference to the naming of the nodes and we can also call this rigid body simulation then we can add a certain suffix so like the frame count and fps this might be useful in game engine to know how long my frame was and then also we have here our uh, included results so when i press render i will have a geometry a position rotation and color texture so i have one fbx and three textures so in some cases you don't need all of that information like i don't i don't think i'm actually going to use the color so for example we can only say uh, do position and rotation then we have advanced so i'm not going to really touch on that these settings can be useful if you want to do certain specific thing but then we have our targeted game engine which you don't have to change anything and then here we have our real time uh, shaders here so if you need help you can click on this button to help to bring up a help uh, menu so when all of this is done so most of the settings are the default ones we can just press render here so when it is done rendering and exporting you should have this folder structure so we have my geometry file and we also then have our texture files so this will then be imported in the game engine and then we're going to set up a shader to work with that so here I'm in Unreal and I already made a folder for my rigid body simulation and I'm going to now import my results. So I can just grab the folders and drag that in here. Now for the importing you might need to enable or disable a couple settings. So here first of all import is the vertex animation. Make sure that is on replaced. We're going to disable most of the toggles here as you can see. And we're going to have to make sure the transform vertex to absolute is on and also here importing uh, the normal and the tangents so make sure you have both of them then we have the transformation uh, convert scene uh, also we don't need X, any material automatically creates and we're also going to reorder materials to fpx so these are the settings that i have here for importing that so you should also have the same settings and then we can click import so i can now grab my model place it here in the scene and of course now it's not going to do anything special so we need to actually give these textures uh, to that so let's go back to my folder here and i'm going to right click and i'm going to make a new material let's call this a vertex animation uh, for my wall so notice this is my wall breaking so in this material we're going to just right click and we're going to type in for example side effects so these are all the material functions from the plugin 
and we need to currently use the rigid body dynamics. This is one big note and we need to plug that in into our shader. So the main things that we want to plug in or the ones that are required are for example the normal. So let's enable that here. It's all it's also mentioning that we should disable the tension space. So if I go to my material properties and type in here the tangents, uh, we can disable this. So disable this and this is good to go. Then next up is then the world position, of course. So this is actually where we're gonna move things uh, in the world. And also what is required is here at the bottom, our custom UV channels. So I want to also add your custom UV channels here. So we're gonna again click on the material here and we're gonna scroll all the way down until we find our custom UV channels. So you have to open these advanced settings and we're gonna type in here number five. So we have uh, five UV channels. And we're just gonna connect the same numbers. So one, two, three, four. And we're gonna save that. We might also can give this a custom color. So I did not have any specific colors here. So I'm gonna just give it a color here. And we can just save our material. So we have that now set up. I can drag my material on the mesh, but as you can see, it's not gonna do anything special. It's like gonna move all the pieces into the zero uh, position of the pivot. So what we need to do is we actually need to create a material instance. And here, if you open the instance, we have actually the option to input our textures. So right now they are actually inputting a black texture, which just has, of course, the value of zero. So that's why they're all at the middle here. So let's enable this. Before I drag the text in my material, I forgot one thing is that we also need to set a specific import setting for our textures. So we can right click and we can say our scripted actions and we need to say to this HDR textures. So if you remember in Houdini, we actually used the HDR format. So if you use non-HDR, you have to also make sure to set it in non-HDR in the game. So this will basically here on the side enable certain compressions and other locals uh, for this by default so you don't have to manually uh, tweak that every time so now uh, we're going to make sure it's all saved so let's save everything and now let's drag and drop our textures so let's save that as well and here let's now drag that material on it and now this is my result so as you can see it's sort of working and it's been animated so if you look closer, you can see that there is sort of like flickering going on, like certain pieces are flickering in different positions or removing themselves. So if that happens, which can sometimes happen, I would recommend you starting Unreal Engine again. So by doing this, you might be able to like refresh or re-import the data correctly. So even like a very small change in data can actually cause small issues like this. So I restarted in real and I don't have any issues with that anymore. So I have the simulation as expected. So we have that wall with all the debris pieces nicely animated here. So let's go back into our properties here. And we have a couple settings we can play around with. So of course we have the first one for automatically playing the animation. We can control this by a blueprint. Uh, we can also here control the speed of this. And uh, also important here or interesting here is the FPS. So in my Houdini setup, I actually did not use 60 FPS, I used 24. This is the default FPS. So this will now actually have the same timing as in Houdini, as, as now in Unreal. So it can be a good idea to actually like properly align both of them. So you get sort of like a more consistency there. And then you can further play around with the speed to actually move things faster or slow them down. Also here, interesting is here the interframe interpolation. So if you, for example, would slow this down a lot, let's say to 0.1, you will see that things are moving into like a very low FPS, like everything is like shocking. So if I enable now the interpolation, it will actually smooth out the frame. So if there is not enough data because I lowered the playback speed so much, it will sort of like try to smooth out the missing data. So now it's actually going to be a bit more smoother after it's done recompiling some of that shader work. 
you can see it's now it's going a lot more smoother. So it's actually almost like a slow motion effect now without even to touch any extra data or information. So that works really well here. So that's really interesting to uh, play around with. So again, this is just off. So you can see like it doesn't really have information between different frames. Uh, so further, yeah, there are more settings you could play around with, but by now everything should be working. So you should have the same result from Houdini now into Unreal. Uh, and that was it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.